Today, we are gonna be making vegan chili. The reason why we're going vegan today is lockdown has not been kind to my waist. Looking a little bit preggers there at the moment. So we're gonna make a nice, healthy, vegan chili. It's packed full of massive flavors. I'm super excited. Perfect for this kind of weather when it's raining outside and it's a little bit cold. So if we're gonna be making a chili, we need to make a chili paste. So let's crack on with that. So we're gonna put our chilies straight onto the hob. And what we wanna do is get a nice charredness to the skin. Don't be scared. That's what we're looking for, that nice charredness. And we want that all around the chili. This is a large red Romano chili. It's a bit of a hybrid between a chili and a red pepper. Pepper. It's gonna have lots of depth of flavor and sweetness. These are just your normal standard mild chilies. Uh, they don't have a lot of heat to them and we are gonna de-seed them as well. Otherwise we'll land up with something that's just gonna burn our mouth off. I swear these smoke alarms in these houses are so flippin' useless. You can fart and they will go off. So the two small chilies, as you can see, we've got a nice, hey, 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 that's a boy. I'm gonna put that straight into the lunchbox, close the lid, and that residual heat is gonna steam them off, which will make peeling uh, the burnt skin uh, a lot easier. Whilst we're doing that, let's prepare our vegetables. So chop your onion up. Yes, yes, these onions, they smash me. So next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna chop up your red peppers. Uh, don't forget the onions and the pepper that you dropped on the floor. They add a little bit of extra flavor. Crush our garlic, about three cloves of garlic. So our vegetables are prepped, we're gonna set them aside. Let's get back to the peppers. Oh, nice, so they've steamed up quite nicely. You can actually just take a paper towel and just wipe it away. Look at that. See how it just comes off so easily. Try and get as much of it off as possible because it's quite sort of, I think carcinogenic is the word. And all the burnt skin is gonna do is just add a lovely sweetness and a smokiness to your chilies. It smells good. Same again with these chilies, wiping that skin away. Now these bad boys can be viciously hot. So you need to remove the seeds. Just a little bit of seasoning, a bit of salt, a bit of black pepper, some olive oil, and then just blitz it up. You're looking for a really nice, smooth paste. If you need to, you can add just a splash of water just to move it all around a little bit. There we go, that's looking really good. It smells freaking incredible. So let's get the stove on. So we're going with a cast iron, thick bottom uh, Dutch oven. A little drizzle of olive oil. Go in with our vegetables. So you've got your chopped onions and red peppers and your garlic. Make sure they all get evenly coated with olive oil. And we're just looking to soften this before we start adding any of our spices. So we've got a teaspoon of fresh crushed coriander and cumin seeds, a teaspoon each. Half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Just be careful of cayenne pepper. It will melt your face off if you add too much. Now for a bit of smokiness and flavor, as well as a beautiful color. Teaspoon of smoked paprika, teaspoon of dried oregano. Boom, just stir that all up. The thing with a chili recipe is that a lot of countries and regions have laid claim and said that their recipe is the original or their recipe is the classic version. Um, when in actual fact, a chili recipe is pretty much open to interpretation. There isn't one set classic one. So the recipe isn't quite finicky, so you can make it however you want. If you want to add or subtract spices to this, by all means, be my guest. And add about a tablespoon of tomato puree, tomato paste rather, to make sure it gets cooked on the bottom. One can of good quality tomatoes, just mince those up a bit. So I've just made a basic vegetable stock here. Uh, it's a knorr stock cube. Of course you can use chicken stock or beef stock, but then, then your uh, chili is not going to be vegetable or uh, vegan anymore. So we're going with a uh, vegetable stock. A na. Drain our beans, a can of red kidney beans. They pack a lot of flavor, tons of protein as well. I had a friend of mine who was vegetarian, who literally every single day for lunch would eat a can of tinned tuna and a can of red kidney beans. And he would, oh, fuck. Shit. Oh, I've got a can opener. <laughs> 
Um, so he used to eat a can of uh, tinned tuna and a can of tinned red kidney beans, and he would mix it up and heat it up in the microwave. Ugh. Jono, if you're watching this, yeah, I still remember that. So our beans have gone in, and they're just gonna cook away quite nicely. We're now gonna hit it with our vegetable stock, and we've got that beautiful uh, chili paste that we made. That now goes in as well. A couple of glugs of soy sauce. That's just gonna give it a massive umami bomb. Because we're not using any meat, we're missing some of those sort of um, umami flavors that come through from a beef or, or something like that. The cat's just walked in the house. Jeez, I got such a fright. Hey! You can't just walk in here and not say hello. This is not our cat. It's our, we don't know who this cat belongs to, but it just comes in and says, how's it from time to time? Gonna hit it with fresh lime juice. Just let that acidity cut through and it'll just brighten and freshen everything up. And then we're going in with fresh coriander as well. Kitty! Stirring it up. You can see it's quite sort of watery at the moment, but we're gonna let this cook for about 45 minutes to an hour and it will reduce. So in the meantime, whilst we let this cook, in fact, why don't you... Hey. Simon here. If you like this video, well, hit the like button. Even better, hit subscribe. It really does help me. Right, let's get back to the video then, shall we? So it's been about an hour and it's looking really, really good. As you can see, it's reduced by quite a lot. So what we now need to do is we're gonna prepare our rice and avocado. I'm gonna show you this lovely creme fresh that we have. So when it comes to rice, the portions are uh, really, really easy to remember. It's one to two. So one portion of rice, two portions of water. Now it's important to give your rice a bit of a wash as well. And what you're doing is you're removing some of that starch. Little pinch of salt. Pop your lid on, bring that to a boil, then turn the temperature down, let it simmer, and it's gonna take roughly sort of between eight to 10 minutes. A good way to tell if your avocado is ripe, obviously you can just feel it and see if how soft it is. But you see this little pip um, over here where the branch was, where it was connected. If you can push it in easily like that, then you know your avocado is ripe. Not ever growing seasons, I gotta be honest. These are not the best avos in the world. When your rice is boiling, it's very important that you watch this. Don't put rice on the boil and walk away from it because guaranteed, that water is going to rise up, push that lid off, and all of that starchy water is gonna make an absolute mess out of your stove. Just stay with it, don't walk away. It's only gonna take eight minutes. Because we're keeping it vegan, I've got Oatly Creme Fraiche. So this is made from oat milk, and we've been eating this Creme Fraiche in this house for the longest time, and it is actually really, really delicious. It's a fantastic substitute. That's what it looks like. You can see it's thick, it has the same texture, and even the same flavor as well. Check. What did I say? Told you, it's gonna happen. Fuck sakes. Fuck. Don't do that. Don't, exactly that thing that I just told you not to do. Don't do it. Now I've got all this rice and starch water on the stove that I'm gonna have to clean up later and it's thick and ugh. Stay here, don't move anywhere, don't go anywhere. Now you may have noticed the quality of the sound has gotten a little bit better. That's because we've got this lapel mic over here. We've got this lapel mic over here so we can do ASMR content if we want. Do you want to know what tongs sound like really close? Cool, eh? This is what opening up creme fresh sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. You ready to plate up? Beautiful and sticky. That's some of that gorgeous chilies going in. Take some of that beautiful avo. Two wedges of lime, fresh coriander, dollop of beautiful looking creme fraiche. That is a vegetarian, vegan, might I add, chili. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty bang on. As far as a chili con carne is concerned, this holds up against some of the best beef chilies that I've ever had. Look, I'm not saying suddenly switch over to a vegan or a vegetarian diet. I myself am personally not a vegan. I'm sure, for, as you've seen from a lot of my videos as well. It's, it's just good to give your, your stomach and your gut a bit of a break every now and again. It's a good chow. Why don't you try making this at home? Michelle's really hungry now. That's it, I hope you like the video and the new improved sound quality. Eww. <laughs>